there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the custom CSS that you can use to change the look of your drop down folder in a Squarespace website. Now, this tutorial is specific for Brine theme templates in Squarespace 7. If you're using the latest version of Squarespace, known as 7.1, these codes are not going to work for you. I have a completely different tutorial listed in the description below. The link should be right underneath this video. So click on that one and check out that tutorial and those codes because these ones will not work. But if you're using Brine and you're in Squarespace 7, you're in the right place. Now I want to mention you can change the color of the folder as well as the links in the folder in your site styles menu. I don't recommend using CSS for that because you're just making more work for the browser. You can already do that in your site styles menu. What I'm going to show you today is how you can actually change that background into a cool gradient or add a border or a box shadow to it, really make it stand out and look unique, and how we can adjust some of those links as well outside of just changing the color, which you do in the site styles menu. You're following. All right, all the codes I'm using today are listed in the description below, but let's go ahead and hop into my demo site and we'll get started. So here we are in my demo site, and you'll notice on the top left hand side, I already have a folder enabled with three pages inside of it. Now that folder, I changed the color of the folder to purple, and I changed the color of the links to a light gray, all of that in my site styles file. What we're going to work on today are some codes that you can use to change things outside of that site styles file, okay? So the two code names we're going to use are header nav folder. That's for changing the folder itself, what showed up here as purple. We're going to use that to add a gradient background. We're going to add a border to it. We're going to give it a box shadow. That's the code name that we need to use to adjust that folder itself. Now these links inside of it, page one, page two, and page three, that we need an additional code for. That's header nav folder A. You have to add that letter A because that means active link when we're talking in CSS here. And that'll allow us to change the text of those active links, like making them uh, spaced out a little bit further or changing the colors of them, anything associated with the active link. So let's hop into custom CSS and play around with these codes a little bit. I'm gonna navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS. Starting with this very first one, I do want to mention all the codes I'm using today are listed in the description beneath the video, so don't worry too much about taking notes, okay? So we have header nav folder, I'm going to open up a curly bracket, and I'm going to paste background linear gradient. That's right, we're creating a gorgeous gradient there. Again, this code is below, so don't worry about taking notes on all of these, and you can uh, get very creative here with whatever type of gradient you'd like to create. So now that we've changed that color, I'm going to add a semicolon and let's give it a border. I'm going to say border 1px solid. Let's just go with a nice gray. There we go. Now we have that solid outline around just the folder. The links themselves are not standing out very much though. So, but before we get to those links, let's go ahead and give this a little bit of a box shadow as well. I'm going to add a semicolon and I'm going to say box shadow and uh, this code is in the description below but if you know some stuff about box shadows you can get pretty creative with what you're working on here i just wanted to lift off the page a little bit so i just coded that one saying uh, set it off horizontally by two pixels vertically by five give it a little spread make it a light gray definitely get creative there don't worry about rambling that off like i am you can copy and paste it right out of the description if this is the type of shadow you want to go for okay Awesome. So now that we've added that shadow, those links really aren't standing out very much. I want them to be a little darker and I want them to be spaced farther apart. So now we're going to use this second part right here, header nav folder A. I'm just going to paste that into a new line. I'm going to open up a bracket and I'm going to say color. Uh, let's just make it a gray. I'll add important there. There we go. So now they're a little bit darker and let's add padding bottom 10 px. There we go. Now they're spaced out a little bit more, a little bit easier to navigate. Again, if you can change the color in the site styles file, I'd recommend doing that instead of using CSS. If you have to use CSS, here you go. But otherwise, try to hop in the site styles file to change that font color itself. Okay, let's do one more. Let's add some letter spacing here. Let's uh, space it out by 0.2 REM. There we go. Now the letters are spaced out a little bit. Let's make them a bit bigger as well. Let's go font size 1 REM. There we go, now those really stand out. Pretty awesome, right? So that's it for this quick tutorial, a recap for you. Header nav folder, that's the code name that you need to use to do things like adding a gradient background, a box shadow, or a border, anything that affects the entire folder. The other code name we use today is header nav folder A. 
that A is short for those active links inside that folder. Use that to add some spacing to them, like spacing the letters out or a little bit of padding if you want them to be farther apart. Header nav folder A affects the active links inside that folder, okay? Awesome. Now the codes I did use today are in the description below, but I really want to encourage you to get creative with this. Make your own unique gradient background, play around with that shadow depth until it really suits the site style that you're creating with your own Squarespace website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.